For this lesson today, we are going to be getting into the fuel pump on an oil burner. So the function of the fuel pump really has to do three things. And honestly, I think it has to do things correctly in order for us to have a, a clean burn of the oil. So the fuel pump really has to be responsible to lift the oil from the oil tank and deliver it to the burner. It has to be able to deliver oil at a constant and regulated pressure to the nozzle so that we can atomize the oil properly for a, a clean burn. And it also has to provide for a clean cutoff of the fuel when the burner shuts off. So your component parts of the fuel burn of the fuel pump really contains a set of machine gears which provide both vacuum and pressure. The pressure regulating valve on the fuel pump is what controls the pressure of the oil being discharged to the nozzle. And these assemblies consist of a valve body and matching pistons. In the closed position, the piston is held against the nozzle discharge port by a spring located behind the piston. <clears throat> so you can kind of see that over here <clears throat> in this, this diagram right here. <clears throat> Okay, so when the fuel pump gears develop sufficient pressure to overcome the spring tension inside the, the pump, the piston is then forced back, and that's going to allow the oil to flow through the nozzle discharge port. Okay, the pressure adjusting screw is what regulates the spring tension, controlling the pressure of the oil discharge to the nozzle. You will also find in your pumps a pump screen and a pump strainer. Okay, What these guys do is to filter your incoming oil and help to prevent any contamination from entering the nozzle. When I always like to think of doing any sort of maintenance on a oil burner, you're going to do three things all the time. You're going to change the oil filter, you are going to replace the strainer, and you are going to replace the nozzle. Filter, strainer, nozzle all the time when it comes to uh, servicing and maintaining a oil-fired burner. Okay, a solid shaft is going to extend through the pump housing uh, seal that drives the gear pump, and then the end of this shaft is connected to a burner motor by a flexible coupling. When we are looking at our fuel pumps, it is really, really important to look at the RPM rating of the pump itself and compare it to the burner motor RPMs. Those two need to be at the same rating. If they are not, you are going to burn out the fuel pump. You're going to burn out the gears and the fuel pump is going to fail. The shaft seal on the fuel pump is what provides uh, and prevents oil from leaking out of the fuel pump housing, rotating the uh, around the rotating shaft. Uh, lubrication is provided to the seal through internal porting and the churning and mixing of the oil inside the, the fuel pump. So the operation of a single stage fuel pump really is, I think it is, is pretty simple. Um, it is provides both pressure and vacuum for the uh, oil delivery. Pressure is the force created by the meshing of the pump gears and expressed in pounds per square inch. It's pressure that moves the oil away from the pump and down, the, down to the nozzle. Vacuum is expressed in inches of mercury and is abbreviated uh, with um, IN.HG. Vacuum uh, brings oil to the pump. The vacuum is what brings the oil from the tank to the pump. The gears inside the pump is what creates the vacuum and what gives us the pressure out our, to our nozzle. Okay, so as a rule of thumbs, we need about 
uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch of vacuum for each foot of lift that we are uh, giving for our oil. We need to have at least an inch of vacuum for every 10 feet of horizontal uh, oil line that we are running. We need to have at least a half inch of vacuum for a clean oil filter. So for example, if we have four feet of lift from an underground tank plus 10 feet of oil line run to the burner and add the oil filter, the calculated vacuum reading should be 5.5 inches of vacuum. Okay, a vacuum gauge reading of about five to six would be acceptable if you would have something of this type of scenario. So your single stage oil pump. So when the oil it runs, it turns the pump shaft. Oil enters the strainer chamber through the intake port, either by gravity or by the vacuum developed on the intake side of the gear pump. As the gears rotate, the teeth squeeze the oil and discharge it on the pressure side to the pressure regulating valve. The pressure adjustment screw on the regulating valve controls spring tension, which determines the pressure at which the oil will force the piston open and be discharged through the nozzle port. This pressure is about 80% to about 95% of the operating pressure. The minimum factory set operating pressure is 100 PSI. The pump can deliver 5 to about 20 times the amount of oil required by the nozzle. This ex excess oil is bypassed by the pressure regulating system and returned to the strainer chamber. The bypassed oil then returns through internal portings in the pressure regulating valve and pump body. As the excess return oil is no longer at pressure, some of this oil is used for the lubrication of your shaft pump seal. For the excess oil to return to the strainer chamber, the bypass plug located between the pump and the strainer chamber must not be installed. That is so important when we are dealing with piping of a of a fuel pump. Depending on what type of system you're dealing with, the bypass the bypass plug needs to be installed or it does not need to be installed. Okay, and we're going to cover that a little bit. So if the plug were in place, the excess oil could not return to the strainer chamber and would require a return line from the pump back to the tank. If there were no return line, the high pressure would be forced into the front seal chamber, which could rupture the shaft seal. Okay? The most pressure fuel units, the seal can only withstand around 10 PSI of pressure. Okay? You should always, always, always check to be sure that the bypass plug has not been installed when using the unit on a one-pipe installation. That is so important when it comes to piping a unit. If you have a one pipe system, again, you should always check to make sure the bypass plug has not been installed when using the unit on a one pipe system. The discharge oil pressure of the fuel unit can be adjusted anywhere between 100 and 200 PSI. Normal pressure settings on a high pressure burner is 100 PSI, but some burners are designed for higher oil pressures. Some of your newer oil burners are running at around 140 to about 150 PSI. <clears throat> On burner shutdown, spring tension against the pressure regulating piston will cause the piston to close, shutting off oil discharge to the nozzle at a pressure approximately 20% below operating pressure. Therefore, if the pump pressure is adjusted to its normal operating 100 PSI, the shut off pressure will be about 80 PSI. For pumps with high speed cutoff, the cutoff pressure may be different than 20 PSI or 20%, but it is important to make sure that when you are looking at what happens with the pump as it shuts off, to make sure that it does not drop. 
and when it does drop, it only drops about 20% and holds. That is the most important thing about checking a fuel pump cutter. One pipe systems. Most of today's oil heat systems require one only a suction line to bring the oil from the tank to the burner. And what we do is we call those a one pipe system. Newer single stage pumps operate at a maximum of six inches of vacuum on a one pipe system. Okay, they can create much more, but the oil will begin to give us trouble when we are operating over six inches of vacuum. On your two pipe systems, more than two inches of vacuum is required. A two stage fuel unit should be piped with a return line to the tank or a fuel deaerator. Okay, and usually what we call those, those are called two pipe systems. Okay, an example of such an installation would be an abnormally long run from the oil tank to the unit. If a single stage fuel unit, two pipe system has an operating intake vacuum over 10 inches, you can have unstable flame conditions, you can have uh, carbon up firing assemblies, you can have an after fire and definitely have a noisy flame. So, when you're dealing with two-stage fuel pumps and units and two-pipe systems, if you have more than 10 inches of vacuum is required, you should install a two-stage pump or possibly a booster pump. The two-stage fuel unit has two sets of fuel pump gears on them. The first set uh, purges the pump of air and supplies an uninterrupted flow of oil to the second stage that pressurizes the oil to the nozzle. The first gear set provides the vacuum to fill the strainer chamber as well as the low pressure oil supply to lubricate the shaft seal. And then from the shaft seal chamber, the oil flows to the low pressure side of the pressure regulating valve and then back to the tank. The second set of gears provide the pressure for the oil taken from the strainer chamber with the surplus oil being bypassed through the porting in the pressure regulating valve and back to the strainer chamber. So even though we deal with single stage pumps and two stage pumps, if a single stage pump can create 20 inches of vacuum, we need two stage pumps uh, because fuel oil starts to break up or vaporize at vacuum levels as low as 6.7 inches of vacuum. So when this happens, foamy oil collects in the pump and the pump begins to cativate. The pump sends this foam directly to the nozzle causing unstable atomization, smoke, and soot. So in a way you could kind of see it in this picture here. You can kind of see where up here in this upper level <clears throat> what we're talking about that you can kind of see those air bubbles sitting up in here. Those air bubbles will make their way down the, the nozzle assembly and that is what's going to cause um, unstable uh, firing, unstable atomization. It's going to cause smoke and soot and stuff like that. So when the burner shuts down, those air bubbles in the nozzle are going to expand, pushing oil out of the orifice, creating an after drip. The two-stage pump may correct the foaming oil problem. The first set of gears brings the oil into the pump and returns any foam back to the tank via the return line. It is recommended that all two-stage pumps be mounted right side up so the air will collect in the top of the pump and can be sent back to the tank. In a two-pipe system with a two-stage fuel unit, it is not advisable to exceed 17 inches of intake vacuum. Okay, with long oil runs where excess vacuum is required or for overhead burners, the use of a booster pump is required. Okay, so booster fuel units are usually uh, 
used to ensure an adequate supply of oil to one or more overhead furnaces. They are usually capable of lifting oil anywhere between 15, uh, lifting feet, uh, oil 15 feet and supplying the oil up to about 35 feet above the pump.